Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is David for High on Beats Production Tutorials. Today, we're going to be talking about synthesis, and this is a huge, ginormous subject, and I'm going to try to fit this into a 15 minute video. I'm not going to promise anything. I might have to chop this up. Hopefully, it will make sense. All right synthesis um actually before we get into anything i just want to mention that i'm going to be doing uh whatever the, the part uh, da part is going to be in uh the beta of ableton 9 for those who have uh, an active ableton 8 uh key you can actually go and download the beta for nine if you are at all interested for anyone else it doesn't matter um i chose to do all this in uh this beta because by the time people are going to be watching this video uh if it's in well one or two or three months from now live nine will have been out and so it will probably be uh the standard by then hopefully um and otherwise it doesn't really matter because i'm not going to get into uh, and into big, uh, you know, into detail uh, of new features of able to deny or anything. This is stuff that's that, that's been available for a while, and that's um, pretty much uh, available on any synth. Um, in this case, whether that be software or hardware for for any DAW, uh, you know, even plugins and such. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, first of all, before we uh, well start messing around in Ableton, um, as you can, as you saw, just. A second ago, I have some nice little drawings to show you. I want to get into a couple of definitions of uh, basically what is sound and how we can define it and how our brain interprets sound. All right, so sound itself is a mechanical uh, pressure that's exerted on the uh, eardrum um, that uh, sort of pushes and pulls the eardrum, and that's then transferred into a uh, an electrical signal that goes to our brain and that uh, the brain interprets as various little sounds and melodies and noise and all that jazz. Um, so uh, this is one way to represent sound where um, we have okay amplitude and time. Amplitude is the amount of pressure that's exerted uh, or that's or that, that, that is present or that is, or is exerted on the uh, eardrum and well time is uh time and this is like a like a, a couple of milliseconds long really when you look at it you know to get a, a sense of of time here um uh, anything above this line is positive pressure so it's pushing on your eardrum and anything below that is uh pulling on your ear, ear, eardrum so all sounds can be represented uh, in this way in this case we have a perfectly yeah, a perfectly drawn uh, sine wave. Okay, that's okay. okay. It's super crude, but y you'll get the idea. And uh, so it's one of the simplest uh, waveforms we uh, we have, and we uh, one of the simplest waveforms we can hear, the purest sounds. Uh, so let's um, let's uh, let's see what we have here. Um, I'm gonna uh, try and separate. Uh, the definitions or you know the the characteristics of sound into three uh, three categories the first one being amplitude so uh very basically if we look at we're going to compare two graphs um if the amplitude would be the amount of pressure that's exerted on your eardrum at uh you know its peak level and so uh, when that varies we perceive sounds to be uh, more or less loud um, that is, of course, if it's the same waveform. Now, the terminology of loud, uh, I don't want to get too much into that, but loud might not be the perfect word. We'll, we'll say that the, the, the level is higher or, you know, it, there's more amplitude. Saying it's louder. Uh, usually when we're, we're talking about a sound being louder than another, it's a very uh, subjective um, characteristic and that can have to do with uh, more than just amplitude pretty much so if we look at these these two waveforms on top you can see the left one uh, is has less amplitude than the right one and it's exactly the same uh, waveform just not as uh, with a, a lower level so basically these two waveforms this is going to be louder than this one uh, no matter what um, and so if you look at 
this one here, it starts out with the full amplitude and uh, the amplitude uh, goes down. So uh, for you know this sound and this sound, the, other, the three other sounds, the amplitude is going to be constant. So we're going to hear the sound at a constant level. Uh, whereas in this case, the uh, um, volume or level is going to go gradually down. It's going to get less loud as time goes on. We're gonna, I'm gonna have sound examples of that. Um, now, the other thing we wanna look at is the frequency, um, which uh, could be defined as the note. Now, uh, if we compare these two, um, the, um, I just wanna mention the one more definition, a wavelength is the amount of time that a uh, wave takes to uh, go up, down, and back to zero. So once it's done this from here to here, it's gone through one wavelength. Um, now the shorter this wavelength is, the higher the frequency is, which means that in one second, basically uh, the frequency is the amount of uh, wavelengths in one second. Uh, this can be defined as Hertz. So when we're talking about Hertz, uh, let's say the audible spectrum of audio for human beings, at least, is around 20 to 20,000 Hertz. So 20 to 20,000, uh, you know, waves per uh, second. Now the difference between this sound and this sound or this uh, graph and this graph is that uh, there's twice as many wavelengths in one second than in this one than in this one, which is going to mean that this sound is going to be of a higher pitch of a higher note. And uh, because it has exactly twice the uh, twice as many uh, wavelengths in one second. And so the number of hertz is exactly double, it's going to be exactly one octave over uh, for those who know a bit more about music theory. Uh, so it would be the same. Uh, so let's say uh, you're in a, in A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is going to be the A above one octave over or 12 semitones, if you will. Um, all right. So, so um, like I said, the number of Hertz or number of uh, the, the play wavelengths per second is going to define what note we hear. Um, a lot of people in music tend to um, refer to uh, frequency more so than notes. Well, it depends which point you are in uh, in your your music creation. But anyways, we get we'll get into that. The um, the other the third characteristic uh, that defines what how uh, we can distinguish sound is uh, tone or timbre. Um, so basically, what we've been looking at is uh, sine sine waves, which have the same uh, tone or timbre, which means they have the same harmonic content. I'll get into different graphs to explain that more in depth a bit later. But um, so this is a you know okay crudely drawn uh, sine wave. But if I was going to go like this with you know positive and negative pressure. Uh, this sound would be interpreted differently to our ear because it would, um, well, uh, trigger different uh, harmonics, uh, even if it's at the same frequency. Now, uh, in sort of the real life comparison, um, I'll give you an example. If uh, one note uh, is played on a guitar, and uh, the same note is play played on the piano, we're still able to distinguish which which is the, uh, um, and it, let's say it's, it's at the same amplitude and it's, it's the same no note, we're still able to distinguish which sound is the piano, which sound is the guitar because of uh, the way the waveform is. Now it'll uh, go um, above and under, so the wavelength would, st will, would still be the same, uh, but the shape of the wave is going to be different in both cases. Um, and if we look at amplitude, it's, it, 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 if you compare, say, uh, violin, uh, whether it's uh, played staccato or legato, which means it's played very like a very short note um, or a very long note, we're going to be able to distinguish that 
uh, even though it's the same node, the amplitude uh, act, reacts differently over time in this case. So it's going to be a relatively similar waveform, uh, but its uh, amplitude is going to vary uh, during the time. So we're going throughout time. So we'll, we'll be able to distinguish a you know, staccato and legato note uh, in this case. So this has to do with, with amplitude. And we'll get to um, how that translates for us in uh, synthesis and what uh, tools we have to try and modulate uh, our sounds. All right. Now, let's get into synthesis. Now, nah. Super important uh, part is to understand, uh, first of all, the, the, the path of synthesis. So we'll go through all these uh, different sort of blocks, if you will, of uh, what's happening inside of synth. Um, these are arrows. They, they, they look ugly. Just uh, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to start by the oscillator. So uh, basically, the oscillator is a waveform. So it's pretty much the first thing you're going to pick when you're going to do try try and uh, create a synth for yourself um, you're going to pick a waveform um, depending on what you want to do with your sound uh, if you want a very pure uh, simple sound that's just in one specific place you're going to go for for a sine wave for reasons we'll see later if you want a sound that's uh, relatively rich you, you might want to go for a saw wave or uh, you might want to go into more complex uh, uh, waveforms that are available depending on uh, the synthesized synthesizer you are using Second, we're going to get into the envelope. And what the envelope does is that it modulates uh, the amplitude of your oscillator over time um, based upon the moment at which you press down on uh, the keyboard and or the, the moment that your um, uh, synth gets the note on a uh, signal. So, uh, for example, a synth with a very short attack time will uh, go on right away as soon as you uh, punch your punch the key, whereas uh, a synth with a very long attack time will um, take a certain amount of time to get to its peak level uh, from the moment you press on the note. Uh, we'll get into detail of that uh, with examples uh, once we switch over to the DAW side. All right, from there, our signal heads to the filter. Now, what the filter does is it, well, filters or removes certain frequencies. And by doing so, you're going to be able to uh, emphasize certain specific frequencies and or create um, interesting effects by uh, modulating the, this filter, and we'll see it later how uh, this gets uh, modulated. Um, from there, uh, the sound will be routed to a uh, number of, of effects. Now these effects are um, not uh, compulsory, but they will add a lot of richness to the sound. I'm not going to get into too much detail about effects as there are so many combinations that can be used uh, that it would uh, take absolutely forever, but I will make some uh, specific, more um, adv quick, quick advanced videos uh, of um, specific effects and specific effects, effect combos that can be used. 